Hi there. Welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name's Shane. And today we'll be talking about how this hydraulic cylinder uh, went back in its bore. That's pretty much the focus of today's conversation. The gasket issues I had, I messed one up. You'll see that in a minute. Uh, I also, while I've got you here, before we get into all of that, I went ahead and used a turkey baster to go inside of these how of the axle casting here there's oil that gets what's the word i'm looking for here um, oil that gets trapped i guess is the best way to put it in some areas inside the casting and so i took this turkey baster which we will not be using to baste turkeys anymore to go in and pull the oil out. I've got some video here that I'll show you of that process coming out and some of the oil that I put in the bucket, the, the oil bucket here. Uh, so you can kind of see it's a little bit dirty. There's a little bit of dirt in those uh, areas in the casting and I'm very glad that I cleaned it out. All right, I hope you guys are ready for this process to start. Today we get the first major component of the hydraulic system back reinstalled. I'm happy to see that. You can see it's already in here. Uh, I'm shooting this intro after I got it all installed. So that's why I'm so happy. You know. But uh, let's crack on. All right, so in the last update video, I talked about I purchased a gasket for this hydraulic cylinder and it, things were going really well with cutting it out and then something happened I screwed it up look at that I was I had a exacto knife or a, a razor blade type knife uh, embedded in some a cardboard box and I was let's see which way was I going I was pulling it this way that's the way I was doing I was pulling it this way with that knife embedded so I could get a nice circle going and it slipped and that happened. So this gasket's no good anymore. I did, however, see something weird about it. Did get it to where it would fit somewhat, but take a look at this. Can you see, let me turn this camera. Maybe you can see it from the other camera. The uh, top down view is probably going to be best. You see these two holes? They're not lined up properly. After I cut the holes, I mean, I didn't cut the holes in this one. They were already pre-cut. But uh, the small holes on this gasket are not in the correct location. So I'm kind of glad I messed it up. Same thing for the other side over here. But the, the holes, the small holes, are cut incorrectly on this gasket. So I'm kind of glad I messed it up. Whatever. I went back and made another one. Here we go. I went back and made a paper gasket that fits properly. On my tractor, the hole in the axle casing, the hole in the axle casting, is that big. I'll show you that here in just a minute. Let me uh, take this camera out right here. Show you that. That hole lines up with a small hole on the uh, uh, on the hydraulic cylinder casting. And in this one, Probably not a good view there. Let me move over here to where I can see a better view of that. I think, I'm not quite sure about this, but on the newer tractors, the lube pipe just goes and connects to that hole. I don't know. I don't have a newer, one of the newer 990s. This is basically an emblematic tractor with a selectomatic system on it. It's kind of the way I think about this, these early 990 selectomatics. The lube pipe 
going back to the hydraulic uh, latch mechanism uh, for, for lubrication of that is integrated into the block that feeds up to the bypass filter on my tractor. I don't know what it looks like on the other 990s that are newer than this. Maybe that lube pipe just, that lube pipe, right, that, bleh, I can't talk. Maybe that lube pipe right there just goes out to the back and you've got to line it up or something. But on mine, it stays in place and it's integral, integrated as part of that block there that feeds up to the bypass filter. So I did make a gasket, a better one this time. I did not try to hammer out the inside. I went on the inside and uh, had my wife hold the hold it up against the uh, casting and I drew a mark with a sharpie and then cut that out with a pair of scissors and a razor blade. I didn't try to hammer out the inside. So the corners here where it uh, where I had messed it up this last time, um, I think I did it in the update video. I showed you where I had messed up these, the gasket here. Uh, the first one I made at least. And now that just slips right over and fits just like it's supposed to. And you can see here, the holes line up much better. So yeah, I'm glad that I messed that one up because I would have probably had to modify the holes as well. Good deal. All right, get the cylinder out of the way there. So what am I gonna tackle next? Let's see, let's try to put the new O-ring and backer onto this hydraulic piston. First and foremost, though, I'm going to stick a little bit of oil on my fingers and oil this up. I've just finished cleaning these up again. I wire wheeled the outside of the hydraulic cylinder. Uh, use brake clean all over the piston and the outside of the hydraulic cylinder. Inside a hydraulic cylinder, uh, just making sure everything is clean. My paper towels and cloths came out very nice and clean on this. No dirtiness. A word of caution though, if you are spraying a lot of brake cleaner around and using a wire wheel and a drill, it'll throw it around. It'll throw dirty dirt and nastiness around. I got my paper where I've classified all my O-rings quite nasty. So cover your stuff up. All right, so. O-ring will go on the pressure side and then the backer will go behind it. Like so. I think we'll try to fit the O-ring first. This is probably going to be a pain in the royal rear end. Maybe not. Well, that was easy. Last time it wasn't that easy. And the backer ring. It's on like so. <laughs> that was so much easier than Having to soak a leather backer, trying to get it set up right. Man, <laughs> that was so much easier. The O-ring does protrude past the edge of the piston. That's good. That's exactly what you want. Remember, this O-ring does seal up the inside of the bore. The, it's 
what it's used for. Which is why you have to make sure the inside of your cylinder bore is smooth. I want a red, at least. All right, now then, maybe you can see down in the bore there. Maybe that's a good view for you. How smooth, this, this is just smooth as a baby's bottom. I mean, it's just totally smooth down there. Still have one little spot about halfway down this, that used to be really rough. It's right in there to it, right in that area right there. It used to be really, really rough, uh, but now I can just barely feel it. I mean, it is just barely perceptible. So I'm, I'm happy with that. I'm not going to take it anymore. I'm not going to pull that thing out any more than I currently have it. I think it is good to go. <clears throat> All right. What is next here? I think I'm going to slide this back down in the bore. Yeah. I think putting this piston in now will be a whole lot easier than trying to do it on the tractor after this is installed. Yeah, I think that'll be a little bit easier to do it now. Oil up the inside of the cylinder. With a light coat of oil. I did just use brake cleaner all over this thing. It's a good, good idea to oil it back up. Make sure I can't feel any grit in there, which I can't. Good. All right, let's get this thing lined up. Get it in there by hand first. arm for my cameras in the way a little bit. Slide this over just a hair, sorry. It's a tight fit, that's for sure. All right, it's back in there.
I think the next step will be to replace the O-ring on the outside of the hydraulic cylinder now. That's the whole reason I took this thing out was to just clean it up and refresh that O-ring. This was not leaking, but my, uh, it is bad though. Look at there, I was able to just break it. Aha, look how hard that is. Look how hard that O-ring is. <laughs> this O-ring was bad. Look at that. Snap. Glad I replaced it. Glad I replaced it. Every one of these O-rings in this tractor that haven't been replaced are over 50 years old. All right, to replace it, let's get my handy dandy O-ring sheet out here. You probably can't read this, but let's see, ramshaft and ram cylinder, O-ring for latch is already on, front connection to cylinder, front connection to pipe, O-ring around cylinder, part number K623566 was subbed to 870169593. It is a 0.139 inch thick by 3.859 inside diameter. It is a dash 241, which is the AS56B number. So dash 241. Purchased. Dash 241 from the O-ring store. Let's get that up there. Dash 241 right there out of this batch. I had to order a quantity of five, so I've got extras. If anybody wants one or two. Of course, I do have another David, uh, another David Brown 990 down home. There, I'll be doing all of this same stuff too. It's a little bit newer model. All right, and then that O-ring is on there. All right, I think it's time to put this hydraulic cylinder back in. I think it's time. Don't know how this thing's gonna go in, but I hope it goes in fairly easily. I have read or heard about this O-ring going in. Uh, difficult, having difficulty getting this in with the O-ring. I may have to beat on it a little bit. We'll see. Um, I know coming out, it was fairly stuck and I had to beat on it right here. We'll see. I did put the gasket on. I've painted it with my gasket sealer. And I think we're ready to put this thing back in the tractor. The reinstallation process of the major components is starting. So I've already cleaned up this side over here and uh, oiled it up. I almost forgot to oil this side up. I don't know if this needs it or not, but I'm doing it anyway. All right, let's see how this works. I did put the bolts on the other side. I think I saw in maybe David Monkhouse's post on the forums that he had used the bolts on the, on the end of down there to help pull it through. Maybe I saw it on a video, maybe it was Barry's. I don't remember. I've seen it somewhere. Sorry guys, I don't remember exactly where. All right, that seems to be in a good spot at least. You can see what's happening on the other side, but I can't. Let me get around there and take a look. I know the light's not very good over here. I apologize for that. Nothing light. 
trying to do something when you can't see. All right, am I kitty corner, kitty conquered? Ah, there we go. Look at there. Yeah, having these bolts down here to kind of lift and lower and move around to get this uh, centered up in the hole right here helped out tremendously. That's awesome. Now it will turn in the bore a little bit here. I'll put the two bolt, the two long bolts through right here to make sure it's aligned. I gotta find them though. Well, there they are. And I will put the bottom bolts in too. Sure, I've got those aligned. Oh, wait a minute, those are the right hand side. Duh. Wrong bolts. I don't want to mix those up. Almost made a mistake there. Right-hand bracket bolts do not go on the left side. Thank goodness I marked the bag. What happens when you get in a rush? Can anyone tell me? Comment below what happens when you get in a rush and you get in a hurry. I should have a third camera behind me here. But all you'd be really seeing is my back. Is that really what you want to see is my back? Now, I did clean those threads out. There we go. All right. I'm calling that done. I'm leaving these bolts in it until I'm ready to reinstall everything else, uh, just to kind of let this set in place. I don't think leaving those there will cause any harm. All right. First major component of the hydraulic system on this David Brown 990 is reinstalled. Hydraulic cylinder is back in its hole. I don't think I forgot anything. Comment below if you think I thought if I forgot anything. But I'm happy. I'm really happy to see this thing started to start to go back together now. Woohoo! Like and subscribe if you like this kind of thing. Thank you for watching.